Let's get recording going. Okay, uh, today we're gonna just work on some stuff for lists and show you some of their other capabilities and figure out a way to sort things by other than the default order. And so what I've done is I've just taken the stuff that we did yesterday and instead of writing a true driver that uses Derby, I'm only using the, the bucket class instead because I wanted to be able to, uh, uh, to uh, play with, uh, with buckets and fish. Okay, so all of this thing does is it makes an array list to hold a bunch of buckets and then <coughs> makes a bunch of buckets, add some fish to the bucket just in case we need that later, and then dump all of the fisher people into the bucket. So we've now got a list of all of our, our uh, people all set to go. Uh, so let's talk about doing some things with the list that you would normally do. Um, the one way that we've seen of removing things so far is buckets dot remove by position. So there's option one for doing a remove, right? But that implies that you know what's in position zero on the list, which isn't necessarily always true. The other way that you can remove things is by doing this. And let me just grab one of these guys uh, like him. Brackets. So, first one is by position. How do you think that second one works? Uh, so, what I did was I gave it a sample bucket that looked like the one that was already on the list and said remove one that looks like this one. So, that's actually that remove is really a better name would be search for and remove. And search for, you know, implies find a matching one. So that remove is going to work by calling buckets equals method as it goes along to see whether or not it can find a bucket that matches that one. Okay? So there's your two options. That's search for and remove. They can have the same name because they differ in their arguments. So you can either do positional notation or you can do, uh, here's a sample. Okay, so that comes in handy if you want to remove things. Usually the search for option is more valuable because if we do something like uh, sort this list and rearrange it, then the person who used to be in position zero on the list is probably not in position zero anymore. Okay. So there's a couple of things that you can do there with remove. I'm just going to delete them to keep it all on one screen. Uh, let's see, we've seen uh, an iterator, and I'll do iterator the long way instead of using it in a for each. So we'll do an iterator only for bucket. And we'll talk to the list to get the iterator. and then make sure you do the import statement, utilities. And then if you wanted to do this the long way, you would say, uh, well, we'll just do it the short way, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Long way. Iter.has next. Do something like print. The next item. So iter.next will give you the next item in that case. <laughs> and that's going uh, forwards through the list. It turns out that uh, list or iterators also have another version specific to lists, and conveniently it's called a list iterator. And when you ask for it, you have to ask for a, see if I can find it on the list. A list iterator. Do the import statement for that. Uh, you can use it this way and it works exactly the same way. So it doesn't look all that different now. Notice I don't have a two string for buckets yet, but oh well. 
Okay, so why would you use a list iterator? A list iter iterator has this interesting property that I guess I should put bucket. Just let me write the two string just to make our life a little easier. And we'll just uh, return uh, first name is close enough for now. Okay. Run it with the driver and now it prints out the names of the people. Uh, what you can do with a list iterator is list iterator has a has previous so think of going backwards in the array of things now and then you can say while well, iter dot <coughs> previous to go backwards. Okay, That's the general format almost works uh, except it'll probably die. We'll just give it a little run through. Didn't print anything. Try it this time. Oops. No such element. The trick to this one is to do iter dot no, which is the option I want. We have to convince the iterator to take one step backwards uh, or basically set it to the end. If I can find the way to do that. Is that where it is? Let's just give it a try. Well, gee, why don't we just go to um, java.sun.com, grab the Java APIs, since I didn't bookmark it, find Java 7, and let's just go look up list iterator. Oops, I don't think you can actually type in there. Here's list iterator. We'll ignore the gobbledygook. Uh, we'll look at the uh, extra constructors, and uh, there aren't any. How's next? Those all return positions. Trying to get it to go backwards. The trick to getting it to go backwards is you have to set it to the end first. And just off the top of my head, I can't remember what the. Uh, that's what we just did, I think. That's the one I tried by doing uh, iter dot previous there. And then the reason for the no such element exception is it's saying your not at the, you were already done, basically. There is no previous one. Oh, I know what we'll do. We'll, we'll do it this way. You have to get to the end first. I'll get to the end the hard way. Uh, actually, it doesn't. We'll just do this way. Uh, there we go. Do it that way. Uh, so what I did is I just said let's whip to the end first. Okay, so that I'm now at the end, and now since I'm at the end, I can work my way backwards. Okay, so that may be the long way of doing it, but it will at least be successful. There we go. And so there they are now in reverse order. Okay, So it actually tends to be used not so much in the sense of going all the way to the end and then moving backwards. It's a more likely occurrence is you're moving your way part way through the list and for some reason you decide, oops, I've got to go back to the previous one so that I can do something and then go forward again. Okay, So it's more likely to be used, to be used in that sense. 
Okay. The one other thing that Iterator has is you can also do uh, iter dot uh, remove, and uh, a remove removes the element that you just looked at. Okay, so iterators are very useful for filtering. You're wandering through and you're looking at things, and so we could do something like say. Um, would probably look like this. Just let me reverse it a bit here. Um, we'll do this, and we'll put that in there, and we'll say bucket who is iter dot next, and then you'd have an if statement if for some reason who dot first name dot equals Fred. To do our own long search. Dot get first name. Okay, so that's what's known in the business as a filter. I want to throw away all of the Freds from the list, right? Leave everybody but Fred in there. And this could be anything inside there for the if statement. I want to remove them if they're if they've caught a fish that's over 50 pounds. I want to remove them if they caught a fish that was under 50 pounds. If their last name is something, whatever things you have for that if statement. And this works because it just the iterator is already basically standing over the item, so it just removes it. Okay. And remember that iterators of this sort are very useful for working on linked lists as compared to arrays because if you run this iterator on an array of things, every time you move something, it takes all the things from the end and moves them up to fill in the space. But if you run this thing using a linked list, it goes along the linked list and when it says, oh, you want to remove this one, since it's a doubly linked list, it just takes one step backwards to find the previous one and links around it and then it's gone. Okay? And it's so efficient to do it that way that it turns out that if you've got a big long array of things and you're trying to remove a whole bunch of things, the best way to do it is to take an array list, dump it into a linked list, run the iterator through it to do your removal, and then dump it back into the original array list again, or make a new array list to hold the result. That's more efficient than trying to go through and have the, the original array list shuffle all the time. Okay, so there's an example of something that you can do with, with uh, iterators. Uh, now let's get a little bit more interesting here. Um, if we go back and look at the fish class, well, actually we'll look at the, dirt, we'll look at the bucket class. Um, we wrote a compare to in this class. And the compare to in the bucket class, the default was to organize all of the fisher people based on uh, the size of their fish, the biggest fish that they caught. Okay? And that worked well for finding the winner for the derby because you could just turn around and say, give me the biggest of all of the fisher people. And that solved the problem of answering the initial question. But in the derby, the next question people are going to ask is, how well did I do? Okay? And there's two ways that you could display that information. The first way would be to show you know, the, the biggest to smallest fish and the names of the people beside them. But if there were lots of people in the derby, you might want an alphabetized list of all of the fishermen along with their biggest fish. Okay? But the problem is the default for putting fishermen in order is only by fish, and we're only allowed one default, which means we need a different way of sorting fishermen. Okay? So if you call collections.sort on the fishermen at this point, on the buckets, that will be sorted in order from biggest to smallest fish. Now, I want to supply something other than the default because it just makes sense to be able to maybe sort them alphabetically instead. Okay? So let's talk about how that's going to happen. The current way that collections.sort is working is you give it the list of things, which in this case are buckets, and the way collections.sort works theoretically, you can think of it as it goes and it searches for 
the smallest fish first. So it goes once through the pile saying, I think this is the smallest bucket that I've seen so far. And then it compares that to the next bucket on the list and goes, okay, you take you and compare to you, which one of you two is smaller, right? So there's the compare two that's being called. Whoever is smaller, it just picks up the winner, walks them over to the next fisherman and says, you know, are you smaller than the current fisherman? And if he says yes, then that becomes the current smallest, et cetera, as it walks down the line. So sort, well actually let's change this instead of sort. Let's do the easier thing. Let's just change it to min, find the smallest fish, because that's a little easier to think of. Okay? And so by the end of that process of walking down the line the line once and say, you're the current smallest, here, talk to him, are you any smaller, right? You can find the smallest fish. Find the, find the smallest bucket. You just take one fish and make it talk to all the fishes. Right? Well, we just basically take one fisher person, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're starting out with the first bucket, and you're saying, you're saying, you talk to the second bucket and tell me who's bigger. And whoever says they're smaller in this case, right? And so whoever says they're smaller, you just carry them along to the next person and say, now I want you to talk to the next person and say who's smaller. And go through all of them. And you go through all of them, and then eventually you've got the smallest person. And right. you do that over again without that person? Well, sort of. if you wanted to sort it, you would just do it over again. But for now, we'll just play with minimum, find the, small, find the smallest guy. Okay? So there's the process to find the smallest guy. But that worked because Bucket had a compare to against other Bucket that did something magically by fish. Okay? And now I'm coming along and saying, well, hold it here. I don't want to organize you guys by fish. I need some other way of doing this. I want to alphabetize you people instead, which means I want to find the one whose, whose, whose last name is closest to the beginning of the alphabet. Okay? So here's the trick. Instead of me going along and saying, I want you to compare yourself to you, I'm going to do the standard programming trick of saying, mm, why don't I introduce a third party? Okay? And I'm going to get a third party whose job it is to do the alphabetizing. And in order to do the alphabetizing, I'm going to introduce them to two fishermen. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the I'm going to tell the third party, I'd appreciate it if you'd put these two in alphabetical order, and I always just hand them two at a time. Okay? And if you can do two at a time, put you two in alphabetical order. If you're in the wrong position, for instance, I could, you know swap you two to get you in order and then move along, right? And eventually I could find some way two at a time to get people in the correct order, okay? But the trick is that instead of me talking and saying you compare yourself to you, I now back out and go, I want you to do the work of comparing in some different way other than the norm against the two buckets. So if you're comparing two at a time, then what about the rest? I mean, compared to, you can get the greater one out of both. You get the smallest alphabetically. You make sure they're in the right order, and then you move on to the next one again, and you compare it to the one who's beside them. Put them in order, smallest alphabetically. You know, there's lots of different ways to alphabetize, but the trick is you are only ever working with two people at once as you're alphabetizing. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll introduce a third party by turning around and writing a totally different class and we'll call it, um, we'll, we'll make it somehow related, we'll call it uh, bucket alphabetizer. Okay, so here's your bucket alphabetizer class. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm going to write an implements here, uh, if I can spell it correctly. And this one is uh, comparator with an OR only for buckets. And I'm going to get Eclipse to write the, uh, do the import statement first. And now it's going to complain that I don't have the method. And there's the method that we have to write. And I'm just going to call this A and B buckets. Okay. So now look what's happened. In order to compare two things, I'm given, in this case, bucket A and bucket B. And as this third party, I'm in charge of figuring out who's the smallest. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the comparison by first by a last name 
and I'm going to say a dot. Uh, no, we've only got first name, so we'll just do it by first name. Put them in first name order. So I'll get a's first name, and I'll put it into a string. I'll get b's first name and put into it into a string. And notice that I have to call the getters here because this class is external to the bucket class. So I don't get the advantage of talking to them directly. And then I'm going to return a dot compare or uh, a dot compare to put it back where it was b. Yep, it still returns an int. Okay, and this is strings compared to against the names. So string returns. An string still returns an integer a versus z. There's 25 letter positions different. All right, so it's still a number. Okay. Uh, oops. That should be a first name dot compare to b first name just to get it right okay so what I'm doing is the this class as the third party is saying oh let me retrieve the first name from a let me retrieve the first name from b let me do the comparison between the strings I'll figure out just based on their names which one of those two is bigger or smaller than the rest okay and now the trick when you go into the driver class is that when you're looking for the smallest, what you do is you pass in one of those bucket alphabetizers. As an option. Okay, and that says, hey collections.min, I know you wanted to call buckets compare to to do the work of comparing these things but I don't think you should use the compare to I'm gonna give you another person and what I want you to do is hand over two buckets at a time to them and let them do the job of comparing instead of bucket compared to bucket okay so there's now this third party in the way and now it's its compare to that's gonna be called all of the time and if we turn around and print out the list for each. Oops. Actually, we'll just print out the smallest one, right? That's what it gives us. I didn't sort them. So we've printed out the smallest one. Oops. Just put something in there so we can see just that print statement instead of all the other ones. So there's Barney as the smallest one. Okay. So in that case, you can run the same thing with sort. If you wanted to sort the list, it would be collections.sort. And then you pass in the bucket alphabetizer guy who's going to be in charge of doing the comparisons. You can plop that in there and sort the list which is buckets. So it's just an optional second argument that says don't do the default, use the guy I provide and let him do the comparing instead. How did you print the smallest? The smallest isn't a string. Uh, it, that's the two string. It's a two string. That's really the, the equivalent to saying smallest dot two string. So it's smart enough to figure that out for you, so I just didn't put it in there. Okay, so this thing is known, this bucket alphabetizer is known as a comparator. It looks, it's written sort of the same way that you would write compare to, except, except instead of me comparing myself to you as being a bucket guy comparing himself to another bucket guy. Now it's a third party who's given two buckets and can choose to compare them any way they want. So it asks each bucket for some information and then does the comparison that way. 
Okay, you got that idea? Because we're about to make it a little more difficult. Okay. The, the, the problem with this is that this version of alphabetizing should really be something that the bucket should be doing. Okay, because it's just dealing strictly with buckets. Okay, so this entire class actually belongs inside the bucket class, even though you can do it externally. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that entire uh, class and I'm now going to turn around and I'm going to dump it at the bottom of the bucket class. Okay, so I moved it inside because it's associated with nothing but buckets, even though it's a comparison guy for just buckets. Now that we've got them in there, the question is, how does anybody ever get them? Because you have to somehow, from the external world in this driver program, this bucket alphabetizer isn't necessarily going to be visible because he's now not a separate class, but he's buried with inside the other class. And so the simplest way to do that is to provide a getter for him and in the uh, bucket class and let the getter do the new. So what we'll do is we'll write public, I have to put static on the front of this thing. Uh, it returns a comparator for only buckets. And we need a getter name. And we'll call it uh, by first name, just to give the sense of what it actually does. And we'll say, you can make one of those comparator guys and return it. Like so, if I got it right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, pretty close. I always screw up the syntax when I do when I do this one and I can never remember what the detail of it is. And it's a, just a I think that might do it. Yep, yeah, there we go. Just need to put the word static on the front of that one too. They both have to be static. There we go. The only real difference here between the two versions is in this case what I've done for the sort or for the minimum is I've turned around and I've done the work of the new. In the second case I buried the thing inside the class so when I talk to it again I'll just copy this line and make it almost the same. And we'll do it in a slightly different way to get this where you can see it. And now I'm not doing the new, but here's the sneaky part. I'm going to mention the class name. And because I put static on the front, it means I can get at that method that was written in that class directly. Okay, So go back to bucket for a second. It's now got a getter that says, I'm going to go make that object for you, just like we did with the iterator, the gopher class. And in addition to that, when it makes that new object, the new object has a compare routine to compare buckets. It's got this word static on the front so that you can call that function without actually having made a bucket to do it. You just mentioned the name of the class. And so this thing actually reads fairly well. Okay. The end result is you say, uh, instead of finding the minimum by the default, which would be by fish, I want you to find the minimum by first name. And the name on the function helps say what it's going to sort by. Okay. It, so the compare.in looks for the compare function in a bucket alphabetizer? In, in that bucket alpha, in this object that you provide. Yeah. yeah. It that looks specific name. Yeah, it looks for the compare function, and the compare has to take exactly those two arguments of two buckets in order for it to work, because that's the only thing that it makes sense to compare is bucket against bucket. 
Okay? And that now means that somebody can come along inside the bucket class and they can write all of the different variations on putting these things in order that you might need for your program. Maybe you want to alphabetize them by last name. Maybe you want to alphabetize them by last name and then also by the fish that they caught. So if there's two Flintstones out fishing, they'll be organized according to biggest to smallest fish, etc. So all of the possibilities for doing that are now available to you. And the, the technique looks always essentially the same. For as much as compare to looks the same, it's always, you know, bucket against bucket and, you know, strings versus integers. These things always look exactly the same. The only thing that you change is you say, oh, instead of being a bucket alphabetizer, it's a, a student alphabetizer, it's a comparator for student, and it's student by grade or something, you know, take the difference of their grades. And so the format of them is always the same. So as long as you've got a sample of this, you can always steal it for an exam question, hint, hint, in order to make it work. Okay. Now, the other thing about this is since I moved it inside the class, I don't have to use the getters anymore because as I'm inside the class, I can get at the thing directly so I can make it a little bit more efficient by not calling the function and I can just change this to, uh, to A's dot first name, get the dot in the right place, compared to B dot first name and eliminate the getters entirely and just look at the fields directly. Okay, makes it a little bit more efficient. And these things get called a lot when you're sorting because you're only comparing pairs of things. So it's more or less, we'll call it n squared comparisons in order to get something sorted. Okay, worst case would be like n squared comparisons. Okay, so over and over again, the more efficient you can make it, the better. Not done yet. One extra trick. Uh, if you notice this thing, Every time we wanted to use this, we had to write a class. We had to give the class this sort of silly name that we're actually never using anywhere other than here and here. It's not seen in the outside world because the only thing that the outside world needs when it uses it is that function name, right? Go back and look at the driver. It just says bucket by first name. It has no idea what this thing is in the bucket class that we called this class. And that class name is only used long enough uh, so that you can call that new. It's the only place it's, it's used. And so it seems sort of redundant to write it this way. So there's a shortcut for writing it. And I'll see if I can actually get it right here. We change this thing to say uh, return new. I'm just going to take out all of those words there and hope for the best. And so notice that basically all that I do, I'm doing is I'm taking out the word bucket alphabetizer and everything associated with it. Okay? And I'm just going to do the backspace. And I think I, hopefully I almost got that right. Uh, da, 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 da. Which token doesn't it like? Oh, yes. Pretty close. I have to add an extra one or take one away, one of the two. Oh, yes, that little thing. Thank you very much. Run source format. I'll explain that thing in a moment. Okay. So there's now the shortcut form for it. I just condensed it down. And the trick here is that now I just say make a new comparator. Notice that's the interface name instead of a class name. Comparators have to have a compare method. It's inside the class so I can talk to the variables directly. And the one thing that messes people up is that little semicolon always has to be there on this because the semicolon ends the return statement. Okay, So it's basically all one big long statement up to the end in order to do that. Okay, So these things, the previous version I wrote is called an inner class because it's written inside another class. And this one, because it doesn't have a name, is known as an anonymous inner class. 
because the name wasn't doing you any good. Anyway, we took out the name and we condensed it. And so this is usually the way you end up seeing those things written. Okay, same rule applies. You can just steal this thing for the next version that you have to write. And about the only thing that you change for race cars is you change that word to race car, that becomes a race car, that becomes a race car, and inside you do the comparison on how you want to compare race cars based on whatever fields they happen to have. They always look the same, so it's basically a template for doing it. And you give it a good name so that that helps you when you're sorting it externally and you can see the name for the thing. And they end up being used quite a bit in Java, usually in uh, the GUI side of things, because they end up having to make little code stubs. Okay. Now, a couple of other uh, quick things to go through here while we're looking at list functions. I've got this function that I've written here that's going to do something. And this function says I demand to have an array of things for whatever reason. Okay? And the problem is I've been writing all of the code in my driver program here using a list of things because lists are a lot more convenient than arrays. But this guy, some guy who doesn't know about lists, insists on using old style stuff to do its work. So now the question is, how can I go about easily converting my list uh, to an array? The way that you do that is you can call, well actually I'll do it the long way first. I'll say bucket array as an array is, now I have to remember the, uh, oops, uh, I remember what it is. Uh, we'll talk to the buckets and we'll ask them for a routine, if I can find it, to array. And what you get back is a bucket array of things which we'll cast. And you can then turn around and call some function with your array. Okay? So it's just a conversion utility. I had a list, but I want an array. Give me an array out of it. And so it's smart enough to be able to be able to do that. Now there's actually a couple of variations on two array. This is one, this is saying it's being converted but it could just be an array of objects. Doesn't know that's what two array does. And so this thing says no, it's really an array of buckets and put it into a bucket array variable. Okay. If you looked with two array when I typed it, there were some other options. There's two array, this one. And this one's a little sneakier because this one says what you do is you supply an array already for it to fill in. And if you supply one that's got lots of room and all of the things will fit, then it will use that array. If you don't have enough room, it will allocate a bigger one for you and give it back to you anyway. And so the trick I'm going to play here is I'm always going to allocate a one that's empty that has no room, force him to turn around and allocate however big size array he needs, and then because I've given a sample of the kind of thing that he's supposed to use, I don't have to do the cast anymore and it should still work. Okay, so those two are equivalent. This is just the one that's, that's cast free, and it's cast free because you provide a sample version of the kind of thing, kind of array it should make. It looks a little strange because it's an array of length zero, but that's only for a sample. Okay, so you'll usually see that one as the, gee, I have to convert the thing to an array. 
The other variation of that is where somebody comes along and gives you an array of things. So here I've got a function which is going to give back an array of buckets for me to use, right? And it insists on giving me array of things back rather than a list. So now things are coming in and I have to convert them. And so all this function does just to show how it works is it allocates an array and it makes a few odd people to uh, to store in the array and then sends the array back. Could have gotten it across a network, whatever it did, it could have read it off a disk drive, it just says here's your array of buckets back. Okay. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to call that other function and what it's going to give back to me is a bucket array of stuff. Okay? But I'd really like to use that in a list. The way I can do that is I can say list of buckets mm. we'll make our new array list like we would normally do. That would be the normal syntax for it, using the shortcut syntax. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make our array list, and we're going to say make a copy, and we're going to use arrays dot as list and give it stuff. So arrays dot as list is a conversion routine. You give it an array of things, it gives you back a, what looks like a list of things. Since I've got a list of things here, I can dump that into my new object and get it to copy that temporary list of things into a permanent list that I can keep track of. Okay, so the short summary of that is if you ever need to convert a list to an array, there's a routine called toArray that will do the work for you. You don't have to grind through and do it. And the converse is also true that if somebody ever gives you an array of things, you can use arrays as list to can make it look like a list of things long enough to deal with it in a list. Okay. And there, these two functions are normally used for a lot of old style code that's been in Java forever. You're calling a routine that's been around for the last 10 years before they actually had any of these collections. So you just have to make do with doing this conversion back and forward until people get their, their code converted to use something else. And with that, we've been through a lot of the little extra stuffs for lists, so we're done for the day. Thank <laughs> you.